Hi, this is Doug Smith. I'm going to try a new experiment for you here uh, involving injecting using small local probes RF energy into circuits to find radiated immunity issues in circuits, uh, digital and analog, and also to activate resonances in the system which may also cause problems. Just a word before we start with our experiment, I'm here in the Boulder Dam Hotel where my office lab and classroom are, and it's a uh, was built in the 1930s and housed the dignitaries that came to witness the construction of Hoover Dam. And uh, since then been restored to its uh, 1930s glory and it's a great place. You should come and visit sometime. Okay, let's get on with our experiment. Let's look at our experimental setup here. We have a Agile Technologies DSO 5054A oscilloscope. We have a VectorWave VBM 2500-3 amplifier goes from 10 to 2500 megahertz at 3 watts. We have my famous little uh, square loop here. We have an Agilent N9342C and I'm only using it as a signal source. I'm taking the tracking generator and uh, running it to my little to the amplifier to the loop here. Uh, so it's not being used as spectrum analyzer so the display is not important. I've got it set to zero span right now at 300 megahertz. And then we have my test board here. This path roughly 50 ohms to a load stays over solid ground. This one goes over a 5 centimeter break and we're going to look at the response of this. And then after that we're actually going to try this technique on a real circuit board for finding an RF immunity issue. Okay, see in our experiment here I've got the scope set on 100 millivolts per division of both channels, 2 nanoseconds per division. The scope is connected to this test board. The test board has two roughly 50 ohm pads made out of tape and and uh, wire to a 47 ohm load resistors, one over solid ground, the other one over this 5 centimeter break. That forces a loop in the, in the total signal path. Signal to load return comes in the ground plane right underneath the path, trying to make the path of least impedance inductance, goes around this gap like this. So that forms a little bit of a loop. So here's my energized loop, the spectrum analyzer tracking generator set at minus 8 dBm. It's a 38 dB gain amplifier, so I'm getting about 30 dBm, which is about 1 watt, to this loop, most of which is being reflected back to the amplifier, actually. So let's see what kind of injection we can get into these two paths. At 100 millivolts per division, it's really about 600 millivolts. I'm right off the scale there. And notice as I go through here, we go through a zero and comes back again. The current, the relative phase, is opposite in the ground side is the uh, signal side because it's opposite sides of this loop here. Also notice if I go vertically across the break it, it nulls out and comes back to the opposite uh, side there. Whenever you see a, a pattern of current like that go to zero and come back nearby it means these two current directions are opposite. In this case the sense of the signal loop is here, back, down here, up here and to the shield so I'm on opposite uh, phases relative to the signal loop going on the two sides of this break. <clears throat> but what's even more important than that is, what, what, which, what happens if I put this uh, loop in various spots? First over there we get lots of signal, just a little bit in the green one. Notice the green one's not picking up anything, that's the bottom trace. Get right on top of it we can get a few hundred millivolts in there. Let me go further down, look at this. I'm about an eighth of an inch fraction of a centimeter away from the lower path <clears throat> and it's got about the same signal injection as the upper path which is quite a distance away. You can even go down here even further. Don't see much of anything in the in the lower path but the upper path still has significant induction into it because of that loop that the gap causes. In fact anywhere I can go on this board I will find I'll get more induction into the upper path than the lower one except right over the lead or when I'm right over this I'll get more in this one, but if I get very far off this bottom trace it, it goes to zero very quickly where that's not the case up here. So if we have a layout defect on a circuit board such as crossing a break in a ground plane that's causing an RF immunity sensitivity, I can localize it with a little setup like this. Very powerful tool. For the second part of our experiment you can see this microprocessor development board here. Now this microprocessor development board has an RF sensitivity um, but it's not really a problem for this board. I mean, if you start putting proto devices, that, the devices in this proto area here with long leads, you can have all kinds of RF sensitivities. 
uh, and this board is really not a final product. It's a, it's a product to try your firmware out on on the bench. So uh, it, it shouldn't be expected and does, doesn't necessarily have to meet uh, any specific requirements. Not a final product. It's got uh, a reset button, and this button sets different states of initially. I like the second one because it makes a noise, and when the noise disappears, we know we've changed the state. We've got our loop here being fed from the tracking generator, the spectrum analyzer, which is scanning from 200 to 400 megahertz. And I've used the bandwidth of the receiver section to control the scan rate of the signal source, which is about two and a half seconds to go from 200 to 400 megahertz, and it repeats. And again, we're using the Agilent 9342C portable spectrum analyzer, really nice unit. So, um, coming in 8 dBm out of the spectrum analyzer, 38 dB gain in the amplifier gives us 30 dBm, which is about a watt, and which is uh, similar to what would induce in the circuit uh, voltage and currents from a 100 volt per meter far field, except here I can do it locally. So let's start. I know that I have a sensitivity up in the crystal area, which you might suspect because the crystal is a pretty sensitive area. So if we get over here, uh, hear that? Every two and a half seconds, it's screwing up the uh, operation of the IC. There's some frequency between 200 and 400 megahertz that causes a problem here. Let's try that again. We locked it up into a different state this time. So you can see by injecting RF fields through a small loop like this, we can find sensitive areas on circuit boards. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the experiment. A couple points to note, though. There's uh, a number of other issues associated with this. What you've seen is the physical implementation of the uh, injection of the signal. What's also important is the methodology used the kinds of probes, the signal levels, how to approach varying signal levels. There's a whole host of things which, if you don't take into account, you'll end up uh, tracking down a whole bunch of problems that actually don't exist. So uh, these are my seminars, and if you're interested in more information on that topic, give me a call. We'll discuss it over the phone. Uh, you can get me at uh, www.dsmith.org or uh, uh, doug at dsmith.org as email. Thank you very much again for watching the video.